everybody. I'm back. This is Hannah. She's one of our wonderful athletic trainers, and she's been kind enough to volunteer um, to be one of our models for the hip physical exam. Um, so I like to make sure the patients are comfortable while I'm doing the exam. So in shorts or other comfortable clothing, so aka not jeans or really tight pants where they're going to restrict her hip mobility. So first, what I'll have you do is just go ahead and lay down flat on your back. We start in the supine position, and I like to position the hip that's affected closer to me. So if your exam table, you can walk around both sides. Awesome. If not, then I'll usually have the patients just flip and lay with their head on the opposite side. For example, if this was going to be the opposite hip. So the first test I do in the supine position is called the log roll. So this rotates the femoral head within the socket, just like this. Um, this will be positive for a variety of intraarticular pain, including FAI, arthritis, or stress fracture. So she will let me know if this um, log roll is painful or not. Next, what I'll check in the supine position is hip range of motion. So we'll have Hannah go ahead and bend up her right knee and hip. Perfect. So this is um, within the realm of normal range of motion. So you can see here, this would be about 90 degrees and she's well past that. I would rate this probably 115 degrees or so of hip flexion. Um, after hip flexion, we'll also check internal and external rotation. So external rotation brings the knee away from the midline and the foot towards the midline. Um, and here her external rotation is about 40 degrees or so. Normal is probably 30 to 50 degrees. And then we can do the reverse, which is internal rotation. So foot away from the midline. And here she probably has about 20 to 25 degrees of internal rotation. Okay, extension for the hip, we'll check in another position. Next, we'll do the strength exam. So starting in this position, we'll have you lift your legs straight up in the air. We'll start on the left side. Perfect. So she's activating all of her hip flexors here to lift her leg up. I'm gonna give you a little resistance. So go ahead and hold your leg up nice and strong. Good. So she has five out of five strength on that side. So good, um, you know, resistance to my um, downward force. I'll have you repeat that on the right. So go ahead and hold it up nice and strong. Perfect. So that's resisted hip flexion or hip flexion strength. Next, we'll test hip abduction and adduction. So Hannah, go ahead and bend up your knees, plant your feet on the table. Good. I'll have you push your knees out against me here at the midline. Perfect. So this is abduction. So the hip abductors or the gluteal tendons do this. And then we'll do the reverse, which is in towards the midline. So go ahead and pull in. Perfect. So this is her hip adductors doing this. All right. You can go ahead and relax. Um, next, we'll go over some of the special tests for the hip in the supine position. So I will often palpate um, some of the anterior structures in this position. So at the top here, you can feel the anterior superior iliac spine, as well as the top of the iliac crest coming this way. You can also palpate the front of the thigh, which is the region of the hip flexor muscles. Um, I'll show you some of the special tests now in this position. So the test we talked about for femoral acetabular impingement called fader. Again, that's flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. So go ahead and bend your knee up like this, Hannah. Good. So flexion, we're going to adduct the thigh in and then internally rotate the hip. So if the patient describes a similar groin pain to what they normally have pain in this region, that would be positive fader. Um, from this position, I'll do what's called a scour test, which is kind of similar to a McMurray's for the knee, but basically we're going to take the hip, sweep it in a big circle um, and start kind of in the hyperflex externally rotated position and then sweep it internal and extend. And so just like McMurray's, this is trying to catch a labral tear in the hip. And if she says that I have pain when you do this and it hurts in here, that's consistent with, again, often FAI pathology. Okay. Now we'll have you put your knee here on the table and then go ahead and let this knee fall out to the side. So this is called the Faber flexion, abduction and external rotation test. So this loads a posterior aspect of the pelvis and will be positive for SI joint pain on the off, um, contralateral or opposite side. So if she describes pain kind of over the back of the pelvis on the left, that would be a positive Faber test. All right, we'll have you go ahead and stretch out the legs straight. Okay, good. Now from this position, I'll have them go ahead and flip lateral. So go ahead and lay on your left side down facing that way. And from this position, this is a great place to go ahead and palpate the lumbar spine if you need to. 
Um, you can also palpate the SI joint here off of the midline for both sides. And then the main structures I examine on this in this position is the greater trochanter. So you can kind of just feel right on the bony surface here. And then you can palpate coming down the side of the thigh for the IT band. Now from this position, what I'll ask Kata to do is lift her leg straight up in the air to the side. Perfect. This is activating her hip abductor, so the gluteus medius and minimus. Now hold it up nice and strong. Give her a little resistance. So she has great strength there. You can go ahead and relax. So um, patients with gluteal tendon tears might have weakness or pain with that maneuver. So that's something to look out for, for a gluteal tendon tear. Um, I think Dr. Luke went over Ober's test for IT band tightness during the last session, but we'll repeat it here just in case any of you missed it. Um, so next I'm gonna just go ahead and relax your um, hip, bring it back towards me. So this is one way you can check hip extension. So if you look here, she's extending past the midline, probably five to 10 degrees, which is normal. I'll have her try to drop her knee down to the table to check Ober's test. So can't quite reach, so I call this a positive Ober's test. This is positive for IT band tightness. So if this lateral structure, the IT band is tight, you're gonna have difficulty having it reach the table here. Okay, perfect, great job. And then finally, Hannah, I'll have you flip onto your stomach. So the prone exam I do just for special circumstances, specifically for ischial pain, proximal hamstring, proximal hamstring injury. Um, but in this position, I essentially just look at the hamstrings themselves. You can palpate the muscle belly. Again, going from the non-painful area up towards the painful area. The ischium is up here high, kind of in the gluteal crease. So you can palpate this here and ask the patient if they have pain. And then sometimes with a full thickness hamstring tear, you know, those acute injuries, you'll feel kind of a gap here. You might see a lot of ecchymosis or swelling, okay? Um, to check the hamstring strength, you can do this in the prone position. So I'll have you flex your knee in, try to pull your knee in towards your buttock. Perfect. So she's activating her um, knee flexors. So go ahead and pull in, Hannah. Good. So I'm going to give her resistance. So that feels like a five out of five. So great strength. Okay, same thing on this left side. Good. Um, so again, checking knee flexion in the prone position. Okay, relax. And then I'll have you bend this knee up one more time. And the other action the hamstring does is hip extension. So go ahead and try to kick the ceiling with the bottom of your foot. Do you see how she's able to lift her knee off the table? And then I'm gonna give her some resistance. So if you have a hamstring tear, this might be very difficult or painful for the patient to do. And then of course, compared to the contralateral side. Perfect. Okay, let's have you go ahead and stand up. Next, we're gonna do a couple of the tests standing and or walking. Um, so next, I'll, you can watch them walk. So I'll have you kind of go a several steps across the room here. So I look here to see that they're loading both legs normally, head on back this way. Good. Um, and we talked about earlier Trendelenburg sign, which is a sign of a gluteal tendon tear. So I'll have you face that way. One way to test that in the standing position is to put both your hands on her pelvis. And then I'm gonna have you lift your right, uh, sorry, left leg off the ground. So when she lifts, you can just kind of bend your knee up. Yep, perfect. So while she does this, her hips remain level. So her gluteal tendons right now are firing to keep the single leg stance. In the setting of a gluteal tendon tear, you'll actually see this contralateral hemipelvis drop down and that indicates gluteal weakness. Okay, you can relax. Again, you can also double check this when you're doing the um, hip abduction strength in the sideline position. Okay, go ahead and face me, Hannah. Um, next, the other thing I like to do for um, hip patients is to check a double leg squat. So take a half step forward um, and just do a regular double leg squat for me. So I like to watch patients do this in clinic, and this is a good assessment of kind of their kind of dynamic strength, balance. Um, and I look to see that there, go ahead one more time that their trunk is nice and midline. It's not shifting to one side or another. They have good form, so their knees aren't coming too far over their toes, which means they're engaging their glutes. Um, great. And then let me have you try a single leg squat. So these are really hard, but Hannah's gonna give us her best shot. Perfect. So you can see how she has really nice balance. So her hip is staying right over her knee, which is right over the toe. You don't see a lot of too much wobbling. Um, she's not losing balance or flailing her arms wildly. So this exercise is one I use for post-op patients as well as patients just to demonstrate um, their improvements with physical therapy and strengthening because this engages all your core muscles, your glute muscles, as well as your thigh. 
Um, and then finally, the single leg hop as a screening tool for stress fractures. Go ahead and hop up and down a couple times. Perfect. So if she were to say that hurts, ow, that reproduces, you know, some of my pain either in the hip or pelvis, specifically groin, then she's getting an MRI to rule out a stress fracture. I'm happy to take any questions at this point. And thanks, Hannah, so much for your time. Yeah, great question. So the question is on what x-rays to order for hip pathology. So for, um, I would recommend to order an AP pelvis. So that would show you both the hips and the pelvis, because I find that patients sometimes have a hard time telling where their hip is. For me, the hip equals the groin or anterior region. But for patients, it might mean the SI joint, which is back here, it might mean the trochanter, it might mean the thigh. So I think an AP pelvis kind of covers kind of your general basis, and then you can kind of have an opposite hip to compare to as well. Um, and then I usually get some sort of lateral. So people will get either a frog lateral, which is taken like this, a done lateral, which is flexed up like this. Um, I don't think you need to worry too much about which lateral, but I'll just get a second view of that joint. Um, so AP pelvis plus a lateral of the head.